Hi all. This is a medium difficulty GMAT problem solving question from statistics and averages. Let's solve this question. I followed this question up with a bonus question. Just tweaked a little bit from what is stated in this question in the bonus question. So you can use the same concept that we'll be using to solve this question and just accommodate those differences and try and solve the bonus question as well. Post your answers to the bonus question in the comment section of this video. Before we proceed, in case you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and like this video if you found this to be useful. Let's get started. If the average of five positive integers is 40, whenever you read these things, just make note of these things. They said that these numbers are integers, which means a 1.1, 2.2, those will not work. They said these numbers are positive integers. So zero, minus one, minus 1 1.2, all of these are not going to work. So we're essentially basically narrowing, narrowing down the set of numbers to one, two, three, four kind of numbers, right? And the difference between the largest and the smallest of these five numbers is at 10, okay? What do we need to find out? We need to find out the maximum value possible for the largest of these five integers. Let's assign five variables, five unknowns to these five integers. Let's say those are A, B, C, D, E. Let's start with the first part. They're saying these are five positive integers. Let's keep that information in mind. That's going to be useful. They said the average is a 40 which means some of these five numbers divided by five is equal to a 40. A plus B plus C plus D plus E divided by a five is equal to 40. So next inference is the sum of these five numbers therefore is going to be equal to a 200. We'll quickly run through that. A plus B plus C plus D plus E is equal to 200. So this information is done. And the difference between the largest and the smallest of these five numbers is a 10 we'll just need to pick one of these numbers to be the largest, one of these numbers to be the smallest. Let me take A to be the smallest. You can do any one of these to be the largest and smallest. I'm just basically making it easy because you're used to thinking of A, B, C, D, E, A the smallest, E the largest. So let's go with that, right? So E is the largest number I'm assigning. A is the smallest number. The objective will come to that. What the question states in, states in the second part of the first statement is the difference between the largest and the smallest number is a 10. So let's finish that first. So the largest and the smallest number, the difference is a 10. So you can quickly in either write E in terms of A or A in terms of E. Let's write E to be equal to A plus 10. So this is what we have. We can even rewrite this equation right now to be an A plus B plus C plus D plus A plus 10, this is equal to 200. So this is what we have right now. What do we have to do? We need to find the largest possible value for the, the maximum value possible for the largest of these five numbers. We said E is the largest of these five numbers. So we're saying, hey, basically maximize E is what they are saying. Now let's just look at these five numbers. We'll come to that E being written as A plus 10 subsequently. A, B, C, D, E. The sum of these five numbers is equal to a 200. We need to maximize E. Take E to as high a value as possible. So if you're going to maximize E, if you're going to give as large a value as possible to E, then the default thing that comes to our mind is basically reduce what you're going to give to the other people. Minimize what you give to the other four numbers. So minimize A, minimize B, minimize C, minimize D, minimize, no, <laughs> we're maximizing E. Now, if nothing had been mentioned, if nothing else had been mentioned, if we just knew that these numbers are five positive integers, what would I have done? I would have given the least possible positive integer values for A, B, C, D. First thing that comes to my mind is, hey, let's make A to be one, B to be two, C to be three, and D to be four. That's what comes to our mind, right? Let's just see whether it makes sense. One, two, three, four, okay? We've not looked at any more condition right now, right? Hold on, hold on. Why should I make them as one, two, three, four? Why should these numbers be different? Has the question stem anywhere mentioned to us that these are five distinct positive integers? No, it does not. So let's not make any unwarranted assumptions. So if we're not reading this, I've not read this. So essentially, A, B, C, D need not be one, two, three, four. That's probably the first place where we are likely to make a mistake. Don't make that mistake. So these numbers are not been mentioned to be distinct. These are positive integers. We want to maximize E, which means we have to minimize the other numbers. So let's make these numbers as one, 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 one. Okay, 
But then I can't ignore the second part of the first statement, which essentially states that the largest number is 10 more than this. If I do that, then what happens? 1 plus 1 plus, these are 1, 1, 1, 1. This has to be 11. The sum of these numbers is not going to end up becoming a 200 because the largest number and the smallest number, the difference is a 10. If I take A to be a 1, then E has to be 11, which is 10 more than that. Sum of this is basically 11 plus 4, which is 15, but it should have been a 200. So this is also not a premise which is going to make sense for us right now. Right? This is not the way this question has to be solved. So how do we go about it? Let's go back to the reframed version of the equation. We know that we have A, B, C, D, and then E plus 10, A plus 10, which is E, which is equal to a 200. This is what we have right now. We said maximize this, which means you need to minimize these numbers is what we have. But this value, A plus 10 gets maximized as a function of A getting maximized, right? If A is 100, A plus 10 will be 110. If A is a 5, A plus 10 is going to be a 15. We have to maximize this. It is anyway a function of maximizing A. So minimizing A, though it logically makes sense, because E is A plus 10, these two numbers need to be simultaneously maximized. So what am I left with? I'm left with basically minimizing these three numbers. Make these three numbers as small as possible. Now I said A is the smallest. E is the largest. So B, C, D cannot be lower than the smallest number because this is the smallest number. These cannot be lower. These values cannot be lesser than the value of A, nor can these values be greater than the largest of these numbers, which is E. So the values that B, C, D can take are basically going to lie from A to A plus 10. This is what it can be because these numbers can be as high as the largest number, as low as the smallest number because A is the smallest number and E is the largest number. These cannot be anything greater than the largest or smaller, lesser than the smallest number. So now we want to minimize BCD. The lowest value that these numbers can take, look at it, it's ranging from A to A plus 10. So least value that BCD can all take is basically an A. So minimizing BCD is making those values as A. So A stays as A. B becomes A, C is also assigned a value A and D is also assigned a value of A. So this is B, C, D. All of these minimum value possible for them is the value of A. And then we have E which is A plus 10. This sum is equal to a 200. Now we have 5 A's plus a 10 which is equal to a 200. 5 A is equal to 190. A is equal to 38. So we said that to maximize E, because E is an A plus 10, you need to maximize A. So this is the maximum possible value for A. B, C, Ds will also be the same value 38, 38, 38. So the maximum possible value for E is equal to an A plus 10, which is equal to a 48. So what is the maximum possible value for the largest of these five integers? That number is a 48. Let's look at answer options. Choice D is the correct answer to this question. I've just made a small tweak to this entire question. Let's look at the bonus question. This is what the bonus question reads us. If the average of 5 distinct, just make a note of it, I've introduced that word right now, distinct integers, I've removed the word positive, I've introduced distinct, is 40 and the difference between the largest and the smallest of these 5 numbers is 11. I changed it from 10 to 11 to make calculations meaningful. What is the maximum value possible for the largest of these 5 integers? Quickly run through the question once more. What is the, if the average of 5 distinct integers is 40 and the difference between the largest and the smallest number is 11, then what is the maximum value possible for the largest of these 5 integers? 5 answer options presented to you. Solve this question and post your answers in the comment section of this video. Of this video. Before you wind up, just want to make an announcement about the dates for the GMAT focus edition you'll be able to register for the examination from the 29th of August as was announced long time back. From the 29th of August, we checked out what dates are available. The earliest date available to take the GMAT focus edition is the 7th of November. Two pertinent questions that come to our mind. If I take the GMAT focus edition, will I be able to apply for admissions to an MBA program starting in 2024? The answer is yes. You'll be able to catch round two deadlines of most US business schools and schools in Europe and parts of Asia. So taking the GMAT focus edition, you'll be able to catch those round deadlines, round two deadlines very comfortably. The second question is, will I be able to do justice to the preparation? To catch round two deadlines, which typically fall in the first week of January for most US business schools, even if you take the GMAT by mid-December, you should be able to do justice to your application and catch the round deadlines. So even if you want to 
take when safety mar- margin of safety when you, if you want to provide a margin of safety in your examination dates and you write the examination by the november 30th you will have adequate time to do justice to your application okay in the first few days of september so you have almost the entire september october and november 90 days to prepare for this examination that's adequate time to do justice to a gmat preparation so even if you start today you'll be able to take the gmat focus edition by end of november or first week of december that gives you adequate room to apply for round 2 deadlines best wishes 